everybody. I'm Larry Ridley. You're tuned in to the NFL on EA Sports. It's a fresh start throughout the league here in week one as these two teams have high hopes for the season ahead. It's the Raiders going up against the Saints. With that, we're off to the Bayou as it's time to debut our new broadcast team for 2016. Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Larry, certainly looking forward to working with you and the rest of the crew this year as we find ourselves here at the Mercedes-Benz Superdome in downtown New Orleans. Today, the opener of the 2016 NFL season between the Oakland Raiders and the New Orleans Saints. And part of a pair of teams that were sort of mirror images of each other a year ago, including in the win-loss column, both finished 7-9. and nine. And Oakland believes they're ready to take the next step. They've been building for the last few years through the draft. They're ready to push for a playoff berth. And New Orleans, they want to get back to the playoffs. Dismal on defense last year. It's time for their offense to jump things up for them. On fourth down, here's the Raider punter Marquette King to kick it away. And a little too much mustard on that one. It hits a couple yards into the end zone. A missed opportunity there maybe to pin them back. And here come the Saints for their opening drive. And let out by the rookie. Expectations high here as he's making his first NFL start. Six-year man from Alabama, it's Mark Ingram. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Second down, nine yards to go. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. He throws and he hits the slant route to Thomas. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. It's a gain of 11 yards that time, and it produces a new set of downs. And, boy, they had high praise for this rookie receiver when we asked the coaches about him, didn't they? They certainly did, and obviously they liked his measurables. Otherwise, they wouldn't have brought him on to the team. Height, weight, speed, all of that. But how about what they really said? Competitiveness. That's what they really liked about him. The way he goes after the football, competes for it, and decides when it's in the air, it's his and only his. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. They'll look to throw. Eluding the pressure right. It's complete. Fleener, right side. That catch good for only a yard, and it'll be third down. And if they want to keep this drive alive, they'll need eight yards here on third down. to throw. Caught by Snead over the middle. They'll give him eight on the play, and that'll bring up fourth down. When you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call, you've got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. Three. 
So in their own territory, but they only need a few inches. So they're going to opt to go for this thing. We'll see. Maybe a surprise pass or run. What will they do? We're about to find out. Fourth down. It's a quarterback sneak. It'll be a two-yard gain, and they're able to convert here on fourth and inches. It seems like, and it is a gamble on their side of the field, but they have supreme confidence in picking it up on quarterback sneak. You can just feel it from this team. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. time he'll look to throw out to the flat that's complete to his running back and he'll be brought down right at the 45 yard line they'll get a couple yards on that one and it's a second down and charles we get a look here at the key and actives and i tell you what a big list for being this early in the season if there's any silver lining at all you're hoping you can get these guys back and now you'll play well down the stretch with them but what you're also hoping is that the guys who have to play for them, the next man up mentality kicks in, and those guys take care of business. And he whips that one incomplete there. Tried to get it to Willie Sneed there. And now it's third down. Oh, man, that was close. The opportunity to change momentum, big play, right in his hands, unable to come down with it. A sigh of relief, no doubt, on offense that that fell harmlessly to the ground. He'll look to throw. This is caught. It's Cooks. It's a gain of 17, and it'll give him a first down. I don't care how many times we see it. I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass trick in pregame warm-up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. They know why they do it for these situations. First down. And they build that trust, and that's why they're able to find him in this type of a situation. The intended target there was Tim Hightower. And that'll bring up second down. And there was a good opportunity to just want to ride there, a drop pass. I guess that's why they call them running backs and not catching backs. Try again with nowhere to go here. He lost the football, and the Raiders pick it up. And he's able to get it back here to the 43-yard line. All right, partner, this is where I get to show my age because I remember when the strip sack kind of came into vogue where defenders were taught not just to make the tackle but do that little extra, try and jostle the arm of the, uh, of the runner and knock it free. And that's what we just saw there. And the first play will be a field goal try. It'll come from the right hash. It's a 47-yard attempt. And this is going to be no good. He misses it off to the left, and this will remain a scoreless game. The Raiders' defense getting ready. Everything looked good. Good snap, good hold. Sometimes, though, the ball just doesn't want to go where you want it. And this one winds up no good. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. And they got across the 50 last time, but fumbled and turned it over. So they'll be looking to have a short-term memory here, Mr. Davis. Not only a short-term memory, but a whole lot better ball security. Because if they take care of the ball, continue to move it, their chances of scoring some points, they've got to feel pretty good about. They thought they had things moving in the right direction last time. Fumbles, they don't just affect you on offense. They affect your overall team because now your defense has to make that stand up. They come out five wide, three of them to the right side. Now they'll throw here out of the gun. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. Normally, he's pretty reliable. He usually catches what's thrown to him. On that play, he simply dropped it. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. 
third and 11. And some extra depth in the secondary here. They're on the dime. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. And he fires one, but incomplete. Kobe Flaner, the tight end, his intended target. And that'll bring up a fourth down. Well, no second guessing the call here. It was third and long, so throwing the football was probably the smart play to try and pick it up. Here's Marquette King now, as he'll kick it away for the second time. And he didn't quite have the back spin on that one. It hits at the four and continues into the end zone. It's a touchback. And heading out for another drive, the Raiders defense. They have a little something to build off of from last time with a three and out. And what they have to build off of? Great confidence right now. Being able to stuff someone on a three and out. You feel like you're in control now. You're doing the dictating. They want to see if that can continue as this game progresses. Will it continue? We'll see. Seeing that play and understanding just how tough it is to cover tight ends, especially the ones running around the NFL nowadays, makes me glad I didn't make it in that league. I would have had a really difficult time. Right, but go. now you get to sit up here with me. Yeah, and that's fun, isn't it? <laughs> what a really nice game right there on first down for them. Brings up a nice second down for them. It's a pickup of six and good enough to move the chains. And the ball carrier there, Mark Ingram, in his sixth season now with the Saints. Yet to have a 1,000-yard season. But any guy who wins the Heisman Trophy, you know the potential's always there. Yeah, but you're right. You have to get to 1,000. Had 769 last year in 12 games. Play clock winding down. Ingram again, a first down carry. And he will lose yardage here to the 31-yard line. It's a loss of four there, bringing up second down. But there's another example of why they haven't scored any points so far. I think it's time to abandon the run game, spread things out, and go to the air. It certainly can't be any worse than what they've done so far. And he can't find anywhere to go with it, and he goes down. The Raiders' new signee from Seattle, Bruce Irvin, in there to drop him with his first sack of 2016. So it's third and long, and defensively not a real surprise there in the dime. Looking to throw. But that play was the very definition of fast, quick, and in a hurry. Suddenly, he was there. Man, blink of an eye. That happened fast and a big sack. These guys told us, these guys being the coaches, they wanted to really stretch the field, get the ball down deep. They were able to do that here. And you know when you stretch the field, you often leave guys in one-on-one -on -one situations. And that allows your better athletes to go up and get the football. I love the preparation that they put into this. They made it a priority, and they got what they expected. He gets it to Thomas. A good pick up there of 20 yards. Looked like the defense put pretty good pressure on him, but he's able to flush out to his right to try and evade people. On the run, had to get on his horse. Still accurately throws a nice pass for a first down. They'll come out in the pistol. Time running out here on the play clock. He'll drop to throw. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. Game clock sitting at 2.02, so they'll get one play before the two-minute warning. Second and ten, he'll look to throw again. Forced out to his left. And he'll avoid the tackle there with a slide. So a minute 56 to play in this first half. We're back to New Orleans after this.
A reminder coming up at this and every halftime this season, we'll be checking in with Larry Ridley in Orlando for highlights and analysis of our first half. LR, that's my man. That's your guy. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage, look defensively. Again, we'll see the pistol here. They'll look to throw now on first down. Left side and caught by Flaner. And he's going to be out of bounds down inside the 20 at the 15. When you execute a drag or a crossing route really well and give them a chance to let it develop a little bit, you can gain some significant yardage hitting your tight end on that one. Now this will be the ninth play on this drive. So now they'll look to throw. Incomplete. Brandon Cooks, the receiver he was going after. And that'll bring up second down. And that was incomplete, but I don't know how much of that falls on the quarterback. He was pressured. Brandon, the rush showed up so fast, the quarterback had no chance to get the ball downfield. to throw now on second and ten to the sideline and oh a nice catch there made sure the feet were inbounds and they were let's make this one simple what a catch especially the finishing part of getting his feet inbounds toe tapping and of course foot dragging a little tapestry if you will oh i like it and it looks like we've got a dime set here defensively six dbs in the game to throw again he may try and run for this nine yards on the play there and it sets him up first and goal now that's disappointing for the defense they had the advantage had excellent coverage all over the field but they let him get away scramble and pick up a first down and inside the five yard line hey, long drive the defense just cannot seem to catch a break and get off the field Now they'll throw here, out of the gun. Escaping the pressure right. And he'll score! Touchdown, New Orleans! It's their quarterback with his first career touchdown in his first career game. And the Saints are able to cash in for six. That was not a designed run. It was supposed to be a pass, but it turned into an exceptional run. What a scramble for a touchdown. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. This is fielded at the goal line. Now a hit and a loose football, and the Raiders pick it up. So that's a solid start. the Raider kickoff unit now as they will send this one away. This will be taken short. And this will be a touchback, so a first chance here in week one to see the ball be brought out with the new rule to the 25-yard line. The Raider defense now, here they are as they get ready to trot back onto the field. And yeah, they gave up a touchdown last drive. 
You kind of need to hit the reset button after every touchdown given up, Charles. I love that, and, and the way that you phrased it is perfect because from series to series, you can reset how the game is going to go. If you gave up a touchdown before, it doesn't mean you have to do it again. And if you made a great play before, you have to reset again anyway because they're going to attack. So I love the way you phrased it and put it out there. That's what they have to do in this series. Not like when you're playing a video game. You can't hit the reset button here. Let's go. No, you shouldn't anyway. That's for sure. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave them with a second and three. Offensive linemen love creating space for their guys carrying the ball. But when that guy also breaks tackles and creates extra yardage, they almost feel like he's one of them, and they really embrace him. Ingram again. And he'll be limited to a short gain up to about the 34-yard line. They got two of the three they needed there. It leaves them with third and just a yard. Tough day, tough sledding right there, and it's been that way the entire game. Not a whole lot of room to ramble for him. Yeah, you're right. It's been that way all afternoon. Didn't get a whole lot better there. They turn to Kuhn on third and short. They give him five yards there, and it's enough for the first. On third and one, it seems natural to just turn and hand it to the biggest guy you have in the backfield. But usually, he's not the primary runner. So for the defense, they're often keying on the running back because he's the guy who gets the ball more often, and the fullback is the blocker. When he ends up carrying the football, that's a heck of a tendency breaker. And now you're just trying to jump on his back and hold on. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. I know the toss play begins with the guy taking the snap and turning around and tossing it to the runner. But where the real intrigue is, can they seal the edge, whether it's an offensive tackle or a tight end in the direction they want to run the football? If they do that, that's the result that you get, that type of a gain. If they don't, oftentimes it's not a very successful play. We always like to talk about defense in terms of levels. First level defensive line, second level linebackers, third level defensive backs. On that run, that was what we call a first level run, and it was stopped by a second level player. They'll need to get the playoff quickly. On third down, Mark Ingram. And he's got the first down before being taken down at the 46. They get five out of that one, and it moves the chains. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. Everyone understood their role on that play. Third and one. You know the defensive guys, they're trying to get down and get low and get leverage on the offensive lineman. And the Raiders have got him. The first time All-Pro in 2015, Khalil Mack in there to bury him for a loss of 11. Well, they go play fake. The problem is nobody was faked out. <laughs> and when no one's faked out, what's the end result? Sick. Quarterback gets hit. Out of the gun, they'll look to throw. He throws and he hits the slant route to Thomas. They get 14 back, but it leads now to a third down. That was a nicely run slant route, and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route, and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps, and cuts towards the middle of the field, and now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and get the quarterback a really nice target. And the play clock's running down. They just do get the playoff as he'll look to throw. A bullet throw, but incomplete. A pretty good coverage there in both of these defenses. They've had good coverage throughout this one. No doubt about it. And in today's NFL... Is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And the decision to bring it out is going to cost him about seven yards, all told, as he's taken down back shy of the 20. 
And marching back out there now, the Raiders defense gets ready. They're just hoping for more of the same last time they forced the punt that led to a score. They flip the field essentially, and that's what you want to do as a defense. Make sure that you put your offense in a great position to run their offense and put the ball in the end zone. That's exactly what they accomplished. Well, they accomplished that last time. What will they accomplish this goal around? That coach is always harp on the quarterback reading the defense and getting it to the open man. That's good recognition there. And how about what he did after the catch? Yeah, hit your tight end, let him get some rock. Yeah, when he, when he gets moving, not many guys want to come up and put a hit on him, do they? And brought in here by Flaner. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. And there's another completion to the tight end. And let's face it, it is hard to overthrow a six foot six inch target. <laughs> it is indeed. Let's Quarterbacks go. like their speed guys. They like that huge six six target that they've got in him. They really do. And it reminds me of what one great tight end told me once. He told his quarterback, just make sure you throw it up there. You know, kind of like put up in the top shelf where the kids can't get it. Two yards to go here on third down. They come out five wide, three of them to the right side. They'll drop the throw, and this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. Give him eight yards on the play, and they pick up the first. And they're on third and short. They just tried to spread the field. It worked. And I think that the spreading of the field, the extra receivers, has really become the next in the evolutionary chain in the NFL. Go all the way back in that situation, you're handed to the fullback, right? As we evolve, maybe you pitched it to your tailback. Now you spread the field, and you have your choices of where to throw it and complete it for a first down. They'll set up a throw, dance into his left. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. Ten yards on the pick up there, and it'll be first down Saints. And we have to give credit to him for buying time and extending the play. But you know, there's some really upset defenders on that one. They thought that they had him. Instead, he was coated in Teflon and got away. On first down, he'll drop to throw. Flushed out right. He's got his man on the crossing route. Give him nine there on the first down completion. And here comes play number six on this drive. And now it looks like they're going to be in the hurry up. Shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. It's complete. Flater, right side. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. They give him 14 yards that time and a fresh set of downs. And the defense with their backs against the wall a little bit here as the offense is in the red zone. Partner, it's a lot of fun watching the NFL now, isn't it? Because when the big fella runs routes, it used to be when we were kids, he'd run about three different routes, and that was it. Now he can run anything and catch the balls we just saw there. It'll be a gain of eight yards, and it'll make it a second down. And let's see what the defensive coordinator may have up his sleeve here to try to get this final last stand right, and win this football game. On second down, Ingram. And the D not yielding much there. He's only going to get a yard to about the two. Partner, we know today's NFL is really built around the guy throwing the football. But these short runs, they still pay dividends because they can take their toll on a defense and they can add up as the game goes along. You control the clock, you control the ball, and that way you often control the game. Ninth play coming up here on this drive. This is third and a yard. They come out here in the eye. Time for a break. We'll come back for the electrifying conclusion after this. So it's Saints football as we get you reset. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. They'll go with a keeper. And he is in for the score. Touchdown, New Orleans. It's their quarterback making quite a splash with his second touchdown in his NFL debut. And the Saints have moved out in front here in the fourth quarter. Now that was an impressive drive. But I think we're going to talk about being way more impressive because of who led them. A rookie quarterback in that spot, putting his team in front, that's big league. 
Here we go now as we get set for a big two-point conversion. They'll look to throw. Out to his left. He's going to run again. And no, incomplete. They can't convert. So they try to bump the lead up to a field goal. Instead, it stays at one. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. Now it's Murphy. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28-yard line. And now the Saints get set to trot out there. They only need a field goal. Obviously, the clock a huge factor. They'll be watching that. What do they need to do here, Charles? Your sequence of plays has to get you out of bounds. Completions, get out of bounds, gain some yardage. Then when the clock hits seven seconds or left, now you've got a decision. Are you in field goal range, or is it Hail Mary time? Because from seven seconds down, you don't want to take a shot that you're going to have another play. We'll see how they handle it. Complete. So 17 seconds now on the clock here. So the incomplete pass brings up second down. Another pistol look here. Back to throw. Eluding the pressure right. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And that's incomplete. Clock stops with 10 seconds left. So still a full 10 yards to go here for the offense on third down. And they went for the big play there. But that drop could really hurt their momentum. And the Raiders call on a nickel set for third down. He's back to throw. He's going to let it fly. And nearly intercepted there. That would have been ball game if he had clinched it and caught it. Instead, it gives him one more chance here on fourth down. One score down. Here we go. They're going to go for it here on fourth down. One final shot. They'll look to throw. Being chased out left. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And it's incomplete. So their final drive comes up empty. And with that, the ball game is over. And partner, this first week, this first game that we get to call together, so special every year, week one. You had the flyover, the big American flag out there before the game, all the hoopla, just having football back, so special. It is an opening day, opening game. There's just nothing like it because you really build to a crescendo. But the best part for us is that crescendo lasts for a while. Opening game here, an entire season. We get into the playoffs, to the Super Bowl. I was really excited. I could barely sleep last night. I can't imagine being a player. So for Oakland, their future home is still a bit murky, but one thing's certain, they're 1-0 to begin the year. And they'll head back home next week to take on the Atlanta Falcons. Meanwhile, for New Orleans, they go down to defeat here in the opener. And they'll look to regroup next week as they head to MetLife Stadium to take on the New York Giants. So that'll do it for us, for my partner, Charles Davis, and all the hardworking men and women on our crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL right here on EA Sports. Till next time, we say so long from the Bayou.